And welcome to another episode of Gotham Sound TV. I am very excited to be here with Ben Escobedo of Shure. Ben, welcome. You are here to show us your new product. I am. Thank you, Peter. I'm, I'm really excited to be here. Uh, this is a big day uh, yes. for us in Shure. Uh, a highly anticipated product, our Axiom Digital PSM. Amazing, and you actually have a working product to show us. We've been very busy, uh, you know, beta testing this with some really big name artists and uh, a lot of different applications. Uh, this product is everything you'd expect the next generation of yours to be, and then probably some other things you might not have expected. Um, you know, first and foremost, it, it's got great audio quality, right? So we're in the digital realm for in-ear monitoring or IFBs. It sounds amazing. Uh, that's like the number one comment we get from people experiencing it from the first time. Uh, it does have digital inputs. Uh, digital inputs has been uh, a want for a lot of people, whether you're doing AES-3, Dante, or AES-67. Uh, this product can do all of those. Oh, so let's look at the back. And I see location sound friendly four pin DC along with AC. Yes, is it is an option to have the DC. Yeah. And then I see these Dante ports or network. Not and Very Dante. similar to Axiant Digital, um, as it is an Axiant Digital product. Yeah, you have your two control ports on the left, your Dante primary on the right top, and the bottom uh, right is your secondary Dante. And you can make them switched, and they all supply PoE, or two of them supply PoE. Two of them supply PoE yeah. for the uh, show link access point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then we have the combo jacks as well, which you can, you know, TRS or quarter inch. You also have your AES-3 uh, capabilities there too. And then this is very intriguing, and, and I think we're going to spend the bulk of our time going over this. Four, uh, I assume those are RF outputs. Correct. The unit I brought is a quad. We also offer a dual, but think of this unit uh, as a quad in the fact of, yes, it does four stereo channels. However, it uh, can generate four RF frequencies out of these B and C inputs. And this will be more uh, prevalent as we talk about uh, WMAS as well as some other new techniques that we have that you can do with these B and C outputs. Ben, walk me through the front panel if you don't sure, mind. Sure, sure. So the, yeah, looking at the front panel here, you know, we have a very nice uh, full color display. Mm -hmm. um, you've got your ventilation, your uh, which is extremely quiet, mm -hmm. your headphone uh, amp, which you can monitor uh, the feeds as well as pick off any Dante channels, just like Axiom Digital can do. Mm -hmm. IR port, uh, light sensor, uh, RF mute, if you want to uh, kill the RF and still uh, operate. Mm -hmm. And then in this quad right now, we are in a four pack or a digital wideband mode. So there are four channels on a single frequency. Uh, you can see the frequency here and uh, we call these subcarriers. So you have subcarrier one, subcarrier two, subcarrier three and four. The one channel of audio I have going in here is just over Dante um, using lossless audio from an iPad. Right here we have you know one channel of a f digital uh, wideband. So this is subcarrier one uh, and what we have is the audio audio, mm -hmm. the quality meter, which is purple, just like Axiom Digital. You've got your battery life, uh, where the volume knob is set currently. On the pack. On the pack, yeah. Wow. Um, it, that there's no headphones plugged in currently. Uh -huh. RF signal strength and show link telemetry, all in one uh, easy to use display. Okay, let's get into the WMAS side of it. Sure, so there's been a lot of chatter about WMAS. Uh, WMAS is a regulatory uh, construct. Mm -hmm. It's not really a technology. Uh, the elevator pitch is that your WMAS is essentially allowing us as users and manufacturers to occupy greater than 200 kilohertz of bandwidth uh, and the rules have been uh, changed to allow anything greater than that up to a, a six megahertz in the uh, UHF band. Mm -hmm. What the manufacturers do in that will vary. Uh, everybody has their own special way of approaching WMAS, but this product is Shure's first WMAS product that will take advantage of those new rules. And so what is Shure's approach to the WMAS? Great question. So Shure's approach has been um, really to be reliable, uh, responsible, and scalable with WMAS. So, um, you know, there are many different ways. I mean, we could take up a whole six megahertz uh, this product in the WMAS mode only takes up 800 kilohertz. So you can visualize it as taking maybe uh, a standard 200 kilohertz uh, block and then putting four of them right next together with zero space on one frequency. And therefore we can do one frequency, 800 kilohertz block, uh, four stereo channels. Wow, okay. That's just one of the modes. I mean, you don't have to operate it in WMAS mode. Uh, w what are the advantages, of course? Uh, WMAS will allow you to m make it easier to coordinate. You have one frequency that can carry all of those channels, in, uh, so it's easier to, to deploy. 
Um, but there are uh, some limitations. You know, with WMAS, uh, it's it's known that with that block, you may have less output power per block than you would using a narrow band mode. Uh, hence why we also offer narrow band digital uh, with this unit as well. Narrow band digital meaning Axion. Axion-esque. Think of it as a 200 kilohertz Axion, uh, but stereo, um, and then you're going to uh -huh. able to get higher output power. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, not to, to get too deep in the weeds, but, you know, it's almost the same spacing as Axion. We can do 17 channels and 6 megahertz. Uh, with a narrow band mode, the same thing applies for this unit, but it's stereo, of course. With the WMAS, to you know, contrast that, you can get about 28 channels in that same 6 megahertz if it was completely free. So you get a little bit better channel density, ease of coordination with a WMAS, and with a narrow band, you get um, you know, more of a traditional approach to frequency coordination and a little bit more output power as well. Am I correct in understanding that quad refers not to the RF output side, but to how many stereo channels on the input side? It it Correct. Has. We see on the back the eight XLR combo jacks, mm -hmm. of course. So yes, out of the box, this will be a, a quad stereo uh, transmitter uh, forever. Uh, in the future, with the WMAS mode, we will ab be able to unlock the box to do up to 16 stereo channels and one RU uh, powered by SureCloud in our licensing portal. The, the sure cloud part would be able, that's how you would unlock it. Correct, yeah. So at launch, and uh, we're announcing it today, however, uh, in January, we will be shipping this product. And then, uh, you know, several months after, we will open up uh, a second wave of upgrades, including sure cloud and uh, some other feature upgrades that won't be right at launch, but mm -hmm. planned. You're also discussing with third party console manufacturers. Uh, I don't have a concise list of who that will be, but you know, the whole channel strip and everything shows up on your channel strip that is something we're working towards uh, with, with some of the big names and, and consoles so um, you can look down on your channel strip and see what the ear battery life is on that talent and that'll be really welcome amazing and so if I wanted to unlock the full um, capability of the unit is that when I would be transmitting out of all four of those BNC's Potentially, yes. There's internal combining as well, um, although with some caveats. Yeah, we have the ability to take the four signals that are being generated here and internally combine them to one antenna. Right. Um, you could also do more advanced combining if you're using spatial diversity on two BNCs and another set of spatial diversity on two BNCs and combine those. So instead of having four antennas, you have just two that are sharing and things of that nature. Got it. The FCC does... Uh, not allow us to use the higher output power. There is a limit when you're doing internal combining. Mm -hmm. Regulatory, um, I believe it's 20 milliwatt all in uh, per output. So um, that can place some considerations, I guess, about how to run the unit, whether you're doing separate antennas, right. whether you're using the external combiner, um, which we have a, a new smart passive combiner, uh, which we'll, we can talk about. Um, but the, um, there is also, you know, don't be scared of lower output power in some of the modes uh, armed with the, you know, true digital diversity and spatial diversity. It's really, you know, you're getting so many data streams, so many paths to the unit, it really, it, the reliability is, is not a factor. It's Amazing. really great. Yeah. yeah. Now, there's also a possibility to use those four BNCs. Um, to, to transmit the same audio data. Is that true? Right. Um, we're famous for redundancy, and uh, a brand new function of this product is called spatial diversity. Okay. Um, if you're familiar with quadversity, where we're kind of receiving uh, a body pack on Axiom Digital with four antennas and having different data streams, uh, spatial diversity uh, essentially takes two of the RF outputs on two separate antennas on the same frequency and can cover one area to make it more robust or extend coverage, overlap coverage, or make two different zones completely on the same frequency. Now, I've, uh, whenever <laughs> I've seen that uh, done, and whenever I've done it, uh, you have to be really, really careful about where your overlap parts are. Absolutely. Um, you can take the same frequency uh, aimed at the same uh, receiver packs and overlap them all day long. In fact, we encourage you to do that. Um, a big game, you know, if you're in the live touring world is to cover a stage and maybe a thrust where they walk out into the audience. Right. And right now with uh, analog ears, you have to pad one down just so they don't overlap mm -hmm. too much. And mm -hmm. if you're in the middle between, you hear whooshing noises and all yeah. that. This, it's absolutely, I in fact, it's better than regular, just a single, you know, antenna and a single frequency. Uh, they found a way to clock them or to make them constructive. So uh, there's actually the data coming over two separate paths on the same freak. 
Um, these are all great advantages. What's the disadvantage? Uh, if there is any disadvantage with, with spatial is that you have to use two of the outputs of the transmitter to achieve that. So um, if you're looking at you know maxing the box out with max channel count, uh, you will get less channels because you're having to use two of the BNCs to cover the same frequency. Um, you can do spatial diversity in any of the digital modes, so the wow. wideband digital or the narrowband digital. Got it. Um, but not in analog. It does not work uh, on analog. Right, because of the clocking. Exactly. You can't clock it's it. It's a digital technology, much right. like, uh, we didn't talk about it yet, but the encryption, AES-256 encryption on this with no latency penalty, um, that's only available in the digital modes. That makes total sense. Spatial is like really... I mean, it, it blew my socks off the first time I tried it. We were at the biggest game of the year, and uh, we set this up in the corner and just tested it on a dirty TV station with like a couple antennas just thrown about, you know, paddle in a in a 860 Omni, and I walked the entire stadium, like the whole bowl, the whole back hallways. I'm like, when is this thing gonna drop out? It was like just like crazy good, uh, and. We've done other tests in the middle of Times Square, like um, you know, we had like an event where we had a couple antennas like just hanging out the window, and I'm just like walking from the uh, one at Times Square all the way to the uh, the police department, and it was just like, wow, uh, incredible. So okay. Okay. I I am a big believer of this. Um, again, the only real negative part is that you do have to use two of the frequency generators, or if there's four in a quad, mm -hmm. you're using two of them, uh, you know, for transmit. So. Uh, in the future, you know, your your channel count would be theoretically halved. You know, if the unit can expand to say 16 channels in spatial, uh, you would get eight because you're using, you can only do two W mass blocks instead of four because you're mm -hmm. using the other two outputs for redundancy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We mentioned this a little bit, but you know, if you want to, you can use some of the internal combining here or not. This is not using it. You would have antennas A and B and C and D uh, for two sets of spatial diversity with two frequencies. You know, that could be uh, two digital narrowband or two W mass blocks if you want uh, doing this technique. Uh, so, you know, of course, W mass would give you more channel count per frequency up to four, and this here, if it was narrowband, would give you one. But maybe you want to cover two separate areas with spatial at the same time. You can do this, uh, it's not a problem. You know, you're getting the same kind of copies of the data on the same frequency, so it's spectrally efficient. Uh, you're not wasting an extra frequency. Uh, aim towards the receiver pack, and then the receiver's got two RF paths that are listening to these uh, datas, and then you have two copies of the data basically on the same freak. I mean, that's the part that's know? blowing my mind, to be honest, yeah. You know, it's yeah, it's, it violates the laws of physics, It kind of does, it's everything we were taught not to yeah, do. Yeah, taught not to do. And yeah, now exactly. we, we are doing it, and it, we're encouraged to do it, and it's just as easy as, you know, selecting what we call that operational preset, which is, which is really great, yeah. Wow, a lot, a lot going on. Availability is going to be when? We are shipping in January. January. That, that's, uh, that's happening. We're looking forward to meeting the needs of everybody for all their projects and touring season coming up next year. So one mode of this just out the gate um, that we were talking about is uh, Axiant Digital Point to Point. Correct. Um, so that's an interesting idea where, and you can do point to multipoint, I imagine, sure. at that point. Sure. Uh, not to say that word too many times. Uh, <laughs> Points uh, of many. Yeah, uh, one of many. So, you know, you have Voice of God applications, you have, um, you know, playback applications, uh, you have the convenience of a wireless link, the audio quality of Axiant, and um, the control of Showlink in case you need to make changes on the fly. Correct, yeah, Showlink is, is a big thing. Um, we, we've really used the same access point that you might already have for Axiom Digital, mm -hmm. and now we, for the first time ever, we can get things like battery life and telemetry and uh, anything you want to remote control, including the volume knob, uh, is available to do remotely uh, from the front panel, from Wireless Workbench or our Channels app. Yeah. Uh, it'll all be uh, you know, right at your fingertips you know, the ability to control a pack, an IEM pack on a performer, yeah. um, and to get all of that rich telemetry without ever having to swap out their pack or, or anything like yeah. that. Is that, I think, is a game changer. We're taking it to the next level. Yeah, it's a game changer just to get battery life and, and some of that remote control, absolutely, that we all enjoy with ADX 
uh, right. Axiom Digital, and, th and this is an ADX product. But we've taken it to the next level with um, like a feature we call Network Sync. It doesn't mm -hmm. sound very exciting, like <laughs> Network Sync, what's that, you know? Uh -huh. uh, but what it means is that for the first time, you're able to take a pack um, that is on the Showlink network and take it from one channel and sync it to another. Uh, if you want to move a pack from channel four to channel one, you can do that. Um, if you have many, many packs, you can move them around using the power of Showlink without actually having to go get them or disturb the talent. I imagine one of the telemetry points that the, the receiver pack will transmit is the quality. Oh, absolutely. And so, you know, when you see a performer, um, you know, like, struggling, yeah, uh, that could be one of the things you look at and then sw switch them over to a different frequency, a backup frequency. Absolutely. Remotely. Um, remotely, yeah. So uh, even to take it to the next level with wireless workbench, and if you're familiar with our timeline, you can actually record the data over time and you can record how that pack is doing now over time. Uh, you can record not just the quality and the battery and the RF signal strength, but even if the headphones are plugged in, you know, hey, I don't hear anything, you uh -huh. can look right here and right on the front panel, see if the headphones are plugged or in. Or you had a short in them or whatever. Or you had a short, or yeah. Um, yeah. are they moving their volume knob a lot? You know, if yeah. you're doing the same kind of playback over and over and you see them like, oh, they keep turning it down or up, you're like, well, maybe we should, you know, change right. the level of the track. So sure. a yeah. whole world of possibilities. Amazing. So now for sound cart use, uh, I can see people buying uh, a dual version of this. Sure. Yeah. Right, because the, the sends are less typically on film sets mm -hmm. and the sends would include um, an individual feed for your boom ops. So boom one, boom two, uh, boom three, let's say. Yeah. Plus a, a feed, high quality feed we're talking for the director and script supervisor. Um, as well as uh, sound utility. Correct. And, and I guess let's take a look at this pack sure. in close up. You know, can I tune into multiple transmit frequencies or multiple audio paths? Absolutely, yeah. We have Q mode uh, and the next generation of Q mode. So there are 64 preset slots where you can put a list of frequencies in and toggle between them with just a, a click of the up or down buttons here uh, mm -hmm. to get to the next one. Mm -hmm. uh, additionally, uh, we've put a, a provision to share those lists a lot easier. Um, with the IR port on the back, and you nice. can just put pack to pack and beam that list over. Wow, the nice. pack itself is a uh, kind of polymer construction, mm -hmm. a same kind of uh, polymer that the micro body pack is made out of. Mm -hmm. About 10 or 15 percent lighter, it doesn't get hot. Um, it's got this kind of metal or aluminum door. Uh -huh. Battery is not new. This is the same one uh, with the ADX1, so if you're already in that ecosystem, uh, you don't have to upgrade or your chargers or anything. Uh, just like all ADX products, you get two batteries with every tr uh, receiver pack. And, and what's the battery life? Great question. It's around five to six hours um, is, is typical. I, is there any kind of battery eliminator situation? That is also a good question. I don't have any details on that um, at the moment, but um, that is a good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Another kind of cool thing besides the knurled volume knob is that we have a locking headphone connector here. So if you want to, you can have your uh, earbuds or phones with a locking connector so they don't pull out. In terms of driving, uh, you know, reasonable impedance uh, headphones, how what's even the not reasonable life? impedance headphones, it gets really loud really quick. You know, so there are, there are limiters, of course, and all that. But um, and you can adjust the window of the sweet spot. Like if the if the user wants it at twelve and that's where they keep it, you can move that window around and put limiters on as well. Nice. And then of course we have two antennas on the pack so uh, it is true digital diversity. There's actually two RF lineups in this pack, two radios listening to the signal and then uh, making comparisons with them to get you the best uh, dropout free performance. Uh, overall it's a, it's, it's a great little form factor. Yeah. And that digital diversity I think is really important um, because now you have the benefit. It's not just combining RF energy. It's each right. Each radio in there is decoding data, and then there's a brain that's yeah. picking and choosing. Just like Axiom Digital, it's not yeah. switching between the two antennas. It's aggregating at all times. It's taking whatever stream is coming and comparing it together to make a decision on, was that a zero, was that a one? What, what was that? Any plans for this to receive an Axiom Digital modulation? That's a, a great concept. At this time, n nothing to share, um, but it, it's definitely been heard. Um, right. I appreciate you, you know, asking that. That would be really cool, um, but I, I don't have anything to, to show on that. Got yeah. it. Okay. That's my request. 
<laughs> of course. Yeah, I've we've heard I've heard that one. Um, um, yeah, you know, but yeah, all right. And then um, we have over the air updates as well, uh, uh, which nice. you, <laughs> yeah. which you can if yeah. you want to. You can still update the packs over IR, but you yeah. can do it over Showlink as well. So okay. that that'll be a thing. Yeah, uh, that's kind of cool. So you know, we talk a lot about you know the high quality audio. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. It is. It is not to be understated of how much better this sounds than analog. Um, the the high end, the bass content, you know, for music applications or just even playback application, it, it just sounds like a wire. Everybody's yeah. like, whoa, and it's like. Once you listen to it, it's it's hard to kind of go back. Uh, a main complaint we've heard, or a complaint I should say, is that you know, is the system on? I don't hear any whooshing or wispies or anything because it's just dead quiet. Yeah. Um, you might have to add some comfort yeah. noise. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Is the pack on? That yeah. sort of thing. Right. Um, yeah. You know, the digital inputs have been asked for for quite a while. The encryption, which adds no latency, has been a big ask, and we yeah. have that now. On that basis alone, I can imagine. Um, there are some performers that would prefer. Oh, performers that, and you film know, sets for sure. Film sets, of course. Yeah. Sensitive information. The latest, uh, you know, blockbuster movie. You don't want your stuff yeah. leaked out. Um, banking, uh, all that. I will forever have in my memory banks uh, the UPM of Sopranos tossing an extra out who had brought a, w a scanner. With oh, them yeah. To tune into the context. <laughs> what's coming up <laughs> on the next episode? Yeah, that, uh, yeah. absolutely. I, I guess, that, I mean, the elephant in the room is like, what's what's the latency, right? Um, the, the latency on the system, there's two numbers. So the right. first one is 2.9 milliseconds, and that's in both of the digital modes, either WMAS uh -huh. wideband uh -huh. or narrowband digital. Um, and then uh, if that latency is too much for the application, the analog is around 1.2 in that, in that neighborhood. So, you know, if you're very latency sensitive, especially for a live performance or music, then uh, analog could be an option for you. Um, but in our testing, the latency has been uh, totally acceptable for the majority of artists, even big name artists uh, out, out there using it. So uh, I don't have any real fear. I had a little bit of fear when we started beta uh, this. I'm like, oh, is it going to be too much? But for most most cases, it works just fine. People don't even notice uh, for the most part. Yeah, that's one foot per millisecond at room temperature, right? right? Something and like that, yeah. How far are you away from the speaker, yeah. right? So, so the, the other big thing is wide tuning. Uh, typically, you know, previously we'd had maybe three different ranges for the US. These are G57, K54, yeah. and yeah. X55, right? Yeah. These are the three bands that will be available in the United States. Okay. Uh, 470 to 608. Mm -hmm. uh, K54 or the B band, you know, you're getting mm -hmm. that duplex gap uh, mm -hmm. action, 653 to 663 uh, specifically. And then for STL or part 74 license holders, the X55 band is great because you have 941 through 960. Mm -hmm. Not very wide, but uh, at the moment it's uh, not as crowded as some of the other ranges. Yeah. Uh, especially if you're doing shoots in like Phoenix or some other area where the UHF is just full. Uh, right. X55 is a great, uh, a great concept. Yeah. I mean, there's a few new accessories. Really, a lot of it's the same. There's a new combiner I mentioned, and, and we can, we'll show well, that. We'll talk good. about we'll that. Yeah, let's uh, and about there's that. a new tabletop charger as well. Oh, good. This is our first WMAS product, so mm -hmm. we're, we're excited to take advantage of the WMAS modes. Uh, we call these m different kind of variations of the modes operational presets. Mm -hmm. This kind of visually puts it in perspective for you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the three different main transmission modes, analog narrowband, digital narrowband, or uh, digital wideband, or the WMAS mode. When you scroll through the front panel, it'll show you what it's doing and what the output power is in kind of in a graphical way. So it's right at your fingertips if you're ever wondering what mode am I gonna be in. And I know a lot of people ask me like, what mode should I use? Like, what's the best? And it's, it's not, it really depends, you know. Um, in some applications, the WMAS mode will be uh, advantageous to what you're doing, and if you need a little bit more output power, maybe the uh, narrowband digital mode might be better. If you're looking at lower latency, then analog mode would be the way to go. Mm. And then, you know, there's all the questions of, am I going to do internal versus external combining? Am I going to uh, use spatial diversity? All, all of those kind of kind of things. It gets it gets pretty complex quickly. But we give you all the options so that you can, you know, play around and make decisions based on your use case. Right. Specific to the WMAS implementation, what what am I combining? Well, you're you're combining uh, frequencies, right? So whether it's a single frequency for WMAS or multiple frequencies for narrowband mode, that's so what we're combining. Okay. So how many WMAS channels can I do in this? Well, great question. You can do uh, in the future up to four. W mass blocks, one per frequency, and that would unlock the system to do 16 channels of stereo audio, maxed out. 
But right out of the box at, at launch, it's going to be one WMAS. Correct. Channel. It'll be one. This quad will be either one WMAS channel and one frequencies for four stereo audio, or you can operate on four narrowband frequencies for four stereo and digital okay. or four so analog. Uh, yeah. So really, it's not just 800 kilohertz of data. There's distinct um, parts of that spectrum. Right. The way we're approaching it is, like, as I was mentioning, like, if you take a hit, you're mm -hmm. only going to lose that one block. Yeah. So it's not, it's not like, um, wh which is an advantage. Yeah. Um, we're using a smaller swath of spectrum. You could also envision it as just taking four 200 kilohertz without any spacing and just smashing them together on a single frequency, right? Yeah. But they keep to themselves in their compartments, and that is an advantage where if you get interference, you don't lose the whole block. So right. Um, yes, if you did do that, you'd have to move that one frequency somewhere else, and Showlink would move all the packs to all a different one. Right. But uh, this is the way that this particular WMAS approach is working. I, I understand it. It's not, some others intermingle them together, it time division and right, all that. Right, forward error correction for all of the channels and stuff. But correct. this is a, this is a, this is Shure's implementation. Right, we and are. And it's not better or worse, it's, it's, it's got different. advantages. It's yeah. got advantages, yeah. you know, um, it's, uh, it's our own, you know, 11 herbs and spices. Yeah. What we do right. inside of that, uh, right. what we do inside of that, that block is like we could do whatever we want as long as we keep within the block and keep under the permissible output power. So right. this is one implementation. I'm sure we'll see many other variations of a theme of like how people approach this, but it just because it is WMAS doesn't necessarily mean it has to be a certain uh, transmission method or, or whatnot. Yeah. Mm. Now, just to drill down a little further. Sure. Um, in WMAS mode, I get my four stereo channels. Correct. Um, and in narrow band, I get one stereo channel per narrow band. Per frequency, that's right. Yeah, so per narrow frequency. band by nature, right. you'd have four frequencies and right. you can move them wherever you want and all that, yeah. I understand this. And one, and one thing to talk about yeah. is that um, there's no limitations of where you put those blocks, too. So this unit, G57, goes 470 to 608. In the future, if you wanted to have a, a block down low and a block high and remove them, there's not like a window where you have to keep them in between. You can put them wherever you want. Right. Yeah, same thing with the narrow band, of course. That's huge. Now, for somebody that doesn't have a spectrum manager or any kind of Axiom receiver, mm -hmm. will the packs do a spectrum scan. Yes, you can do a scan with the pack and you know bring it back to get that information back to the, the unit to give you where you should be. That's um, cool. And and I would love a standalone scan mode. So like if I'm on a scout or if oh, I want to send <laughs> if I want to send this to, to somebody and say, hey, yeah. just scan it and then send uh, it back to me. Absolutely. Like One thing to talk about, I think, mm -hmm. which is important, is that in our implementation of, of this particular WMAS uh, is the what happens if you get interference, for Co example. Sure. Right? So, I mean, so your implementation, Shure's implementation of WMAS is 800 kilohertz wide. 800 kilohertz wide and on a single frequency, yes. Right. And then there's four stereo channels that are arranged uh, you know, left to right. I don't think it, it goes one, two, three, four. It might be in a different order, but you yeah, know. whatever. So, you know, you're doing your, your film shoot and mm -hmm. somebody comes up and fires right up on top of that block. I mean, right. it's not that big, but I mean, it could happen. And yeah. what, what happens? What, um, what does happen? And this implementation, uh, only the that stereo channel would be affected. You're not going to lose the rest of it. Uh, so, you know, maybe it'll be channel three would have a problem, and the rest of the unit would persist. Um, in that case, you can change the frequency to a new location, and all of the packs would move over to the new uh, location using Showlink. Now, apart from the end user uh, waving their hands, <laughs> yes, um, does is the system capable of reporting an issue? Of course, yeah, and that would be uh, provided back f by telemetry through the show link, saying, "Hey, channel three is having an issue. Low Q, low quality interference detected," and give you the opportunity to change that frequency manually. Got it. Now, out of the gate, this will be a manual process, right? You can mm -hmm. uh, move it to a new frequency. Uh, in the future, uh, there will be the, you know, what everybody knows Axiant for uh, as far as automatic frequency changes on the fly uh, using the Spectrum Manager. That right. will be like a future uh, revision. Yeah. Okay, all right. I would hope, uh, or this would be my feature suggestion, uh, that one pack could do the scan, give it into the system, and then the system could build backups based on that scan, even if it's not happening in real time. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if the, the system itself could do that, but um, you know we have that ability in Workbench currently, sure, right? Yep. Offline backups and yeah, stuff, and you could have exactly. you know, go to this new frequency. So, um, you know, that's the whole thing with WMAS. You're putting its eggs in a basket. How mm -hmm. many eggs you want to put in that basket, and what happens if one of the eggs breaks? You got to move the whole basket. So that's 
kind of what we're, we're doing here, but on a, on a scalable and responsible way uh, of doing it uh, that I think is advantageous. I mean, w what's better than going to the shoot and firing up one frequency and getting, you know, your four channels that you need or eight mono in that same area? It's just very Right, and, and I think that's worth repeating. 800 kilohertz, it's four stereo. For stereo, Which and in 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 film or, or broadcast, that's eight mono. Eight mono, and we yeah. mentioned that the isolation between left and right is extreme. So, like when you're all the way to the left or all the way to the right, using it in mono mode, there's very good separation in between. So, you absolutely, can use it as eight mono all day long. I can take four RF output carriers and distribute those around a facility or a set without worry of the overlaps causing swishing noises or, or Right, if you're using spatial diversity. Right. So, for example, if you wanted to cover two different areas on the set um, that weren't close to each other, uh, you could use this unit in spatial diversity and put the A antenna on one location and the B on the other, and mm -hmm. that's fine. If they did overlap, fine, um, but it would still operate great um, without any external boxes, right? right. So uh, on day one, this four-channel unit, and say you are doing W mass mode, you could put that one frequency on two antennas in two locations and have zone coverage without any external hardware right off the rip. Uh, so that's... That's huge. Uh, that's huge, right? That's, um, that's very huge. Uh, many different applications for that where it's like it just eliminates so much of the outboard gear that you need to do that currently and worrying about overlaps and such. Um, now, additionally, uh, on day one with this product, with you know W mass mode, uh, one four channel block, four stereo channels, uh, you could just put up a second antenna to get more robust coverage in that in that area right. uh, and have uh, the ultimate uh, in reliability if, y if you want to. I mean, there's really no downside for doing that besides uh, having to put up another antenna. So it's optional, but we, g we give you that option. Very cool. I can see all kinds of uses uh, in on the film world, like I said, you know, with eight um, mono feeds and one um, in one 800 kilohertz slot, yeah, that's huge. And, and we talked about you know boom one, boom two, boom three, all getting very high quality, low latency feeds that way. Plus the script supervisor and the director getting their own feed, um, it's et cetera. But I could also see people using this on a reality show, like an installed reality show, for example, yeah, where you're sending camera mixes to cameras and and you're putting this pack on a camera and just using the headphone output as, as an output. Yeah. I know that this wasn't the intended market. Will there be a kind of mode that will turn it into a, a electronically balanced output? That is a great question. I, I don't know. Um, as of right now, it's just a really super duper headphone uh, amp. Mm -hmm. uh, good question. Circling back to, you know, we talked about internal combining and some of the considerations. We talked about spatial diversity, but uh, there is a new external combiner uh, for this unit. Yeah, let's We should talk that. about yeah. that. So, yeah. uh, unfortunately, I don't have the hardware with me today, mm -hmm. but what it is, it's a smart passive combiner. So, okay. what we mean by that is that it, it is a either one to eight or two one to fours. And the reason we have it on two one to fours, uh, as shown in the slide, is that there is, um, you know, the A and the B for spatial diversity. So you can keep those separate um, and, you know, still manage it appropriately. Now we do know, you know, just, you know, RF is RF. Every antenna here, every cable is the same. There's nothing special about it. You can use your existing passive cables and passive antennas. What we know is that there's loss, right? When you go one to four or one to eight, you're, you're going to incur some loss. Sure. Now, historically, PSM 1000 analog systems would have active electronics inside of the, the combiner to make up for that. Correct. With this unit, what it does is that when you connect the BNC cable from this transmitter to the combiner, it says, oh, you're a one to four split and you're losing X amount of dB. Oh. Can you give me some more power to make up for that? And then this unit will send more power uh, to achieve uh, as close to unity gain as possible. Bearing in mind the regulatory framework. Bearing in mind the regulatory Got framework and, okay. and bearing in mind the capabilities of how much boost you can actually get or how much output power you can get from this. Sure. But yeah. uh, it's really a novel idea if you need to go that way. Uh, for the majority of users, especially if you were doing like we're talking, you know, 16 channels and one RU, like, uh, you may not need the combiner at all. Like, I mean, if you're doing a, a massive amount of channels and you have a lot of a lot of different uh, PSM transmits, this may be, you know, something that you would use. Uh, I would say the majority of customers uh, probably won't need the combiner, but we do have it. Um, I will say this that you know we only recommend using this combiner with this 
unit. Uh, I would not use a analog combiner from Shure or anyone else with right. this unit. It's um, not that it's going to damage or anything, but it's uh, really designed to work in tandem with it for best Got performance. Got right? it. Clean, clean amplification and, and low, you know, and all so that. And so at the BNC output, without any smart combiner, what is the power for a single 800 kilohertz WMAS? That's a great question. Um, so, you know, there, there's limits. Uh, you know, we, we can do a lot more power. However, the FCC limits one device or one FCC ID box to be about 250 milliwatts all in okay. uh, at the most. And this product will come a little bit lower than that to account for any, you know, spurious emissions <laughs> or stuff. So. Um, with that being said, it's kind of a game where, s let's just say this box can do around 200 milliwatts mm -hmm. all in, right? Um, we're still facing regulatory stuff for, you know, unlicensed use at 50 milliwatt for, uh, for most applications. And then part 74 and licensed use can do up to, what, 250. Right. Um, and then, uh, because the box is limited at, say, 200, you'll have to, uh, you know, there'll be, as you, use more of the outputs and divvy it up more, they'll be sharing that power because of the, the, uh, the, the FCC limitations and so forth. S so the FCC yeah. limitations is not necessarily at, at the BNC output, it's per uh, device ID. Yes, per Got FCC it. ID, yeah, it's not per. I mean, uh, this box, if there was no FCC limitations, we could do a lot more. Uh, sure, we're, of course. But we have to, we're playing by the rules and we're, you know, we're doing it appropriately. Yeah. So uh, with that being said, um, this box with the four frequency generators, and I say it is capped at around, say, 200, because mm -hmm. we're in that, in that limit. Um, in fact, the dual might have a little bit better performance for longer distance because you're taking that same 200 and then you're dividing it by two outputs instead of four. So mm -hmm. uh, the dual would be a little bit more advantageous as far as range and output power goes. It really depends. If you're going to be doing supreme long distance, point-to-point -point stuff, uh, versus just, you know, normal, what I would call normal uh, film set or stage usage, yeah. Got it, okay. Side by side, dual and quad. Yeah. Um, will they have the same output power on a single BNC if that's the, if I'm only using that mode or, or even then the dual would have a slight the advantage? The dual would have a slight advantage, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, it would. That's a lot to think about. It's <laughs> it gets pretty complex yeah. quickly. Um, it's a, it's another reason in my mind, apart from <laughs> everything else, that you really would want to use the Shure combiner because 200 milliwatts, 800 kilohertz wide, there's no combiner on the market in our world that I can think of that was designed with that as a spec. Correct. Yeah, it's more about the linearity of, of yes. it, right? I mean, yeah. you probably th you could probably engineer something like that, but it would maybe be the size of a small mini fridge yes. and hot yes. and like, you know, there's there's all those considerations. <laughs> yes. So that kind of went into a lot of the thought process here. Yeah. Um, but it, it's really, it comes back to like, it's not all about output power. Just like as we learn with digital, it's about getting the right signal and understanding it intelligibly. Uh, it's more about that more than ever these days rather than just sheer brute, for, brute right. force. So Absolutely. Um, in some cases, lower output power with spatial diversity will outperform higher output power on a single carrier without spatial right. and such. So right. your mileage may vary, all that stuff. No, um, no, but no, absolutely. It's, uh, yeah. it's one of those things that um, kind of like quadversity, you have to try it to, to believe I'm it, right? I'm a big fan when you're close of, of you know, trying two milliwatts. Right. You know, that's, that uh, often works. Right. Uh, low output power, like I mean, we're talking like you know, broadcast studios here in New York, that's like bread and butter. You know, keeping your power down allows you to yeah. uh, use more antennas in quadversity and then maybe reuse those frequencies in the neighboring studios or, you know, uh, around the film set and such. Yes. So, yes. Um, the, the cool thing is that we give you all the options. We're not right. really limiting. We're giving you everything we possibly can per FCC regulations. Uh, but you know, there's, you could just twist a knob and try this or try that. It's really, it's all there to to, to experiment with. And um, I really haven't had a mode where I'm like, man, I will never use that mode. They've all been great. Um, I, you know, even playing around with this unit, as, as I'm sure you will, I've, I did dumb stuff on purpose, like take two spatials and put them in the same combiner side and uh -huh. things work. I'm not, uh -huh. I'm not advocating to <laughs> do that, but like, you know, what if I took a, a spatial and I split that spatial and passively to like three antennas instead of two? And yeah. like, it's been pretty cool. Like uh, the system just is very figures resilient it and it just figures it out. Yeah. Um, Huh. When there is like a drop out at extreme range uh, and that kind of thing, it's very graceful. Like it just kind of mutes and then comes back. It doesn't pop or bang or hiss or any right. of that stuff. Th I mean, so yeah. that is an interesting question though. Uh, a number of facilities already have distributed antennas.
antenna systems. Sure. Um, can I just uh, set this up and and plug it into their distributed antenna system, it, assuming they're passively split? Yes and no. Um, the the issue with a passive split is loss, or right. pa you know, pa it, you you're going to get loss, right? right? And then if it's not using one of our smart splitters, you won't be making up for that loss. And yeah. Currently, we don't. There's no booster that we officially recommend to do so. No, right? no, no. But can I set this to to be max? You know, the two hundred right. watts and and do it. That way? Well, I mean, you know, whatever the max may be. Say, it, like on the dual, may, it might be around a hundred on two narrow band frequencies. Uh, it might be less. Uh, you know, slightly less due to you know architectural concerns. Ah. Stuff, See, right? the way I would envision this working is um, if I if there's a broadcast facility that right now has um, eight IFB talk paths, for example. Sure. So I'm limiting it to one 800 kilohertz. Mm -hmm. um, I can put I can do single single uh, W mass channel, mm -hmm. set it to the max power, and then just feed it into a, a bunch of passive splitters um, that would hit their different studios. Sure. Uh, it's not the it's not the same thing, right? As it's not taking advantage of of the frequency, you know, dual the spatial spatial diversity, right, the spatial, yeah. But it w could it could potentially solve some frequency it could. issues. We have this new like kind of uh, utility tool here, the AD two twenty one, which is very similar to a one to two passive mm -hmm. split or combined. That's what it is. Um, but what this one does is it has those smarts inside to communicate with the transmitter. So if you are doing that kind of stuff, it will say, hey, I need some more power because I'm losing 3 dB or 4 dB uh, or whatever. So very nice. um, this is the, the right. one of the two combiner options that we have with it to uh, you know, facilitate that extra output power. Hey, I'm, you're losing 3 dB. Give me some more power, please. And it'll uh, ask the transmitter to give you more power. Awesome. Ben, this is this is really uh, mind blowing. I can't wait t for to get this technology into the hands of our customers. Um, I can't wait to try it out. So you know, I got to say, sitting here uh, on the table, looking at the PowerPoint, that's cool. Yeah. It sounds cool. But let's put it to the test. Sure. I have an idea. All right. So what I what I propose we do is. I'm going to take a pack. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to take the output of the pack and I'm going to put that into an audio recorder. Yeah. And I'm just going to go for a walk. We'll record my GPS position. Yeah. I'll bring a, a camera you along. You should do a little yeah, selfie Yeah, it's just POV. Deal. Yeah. Um, you know, and we'll just keep walking. Okay. So I'll listen to the recorder. Sure. Um, the idea is we'll use public domain music. Of course. So that people can actually hear what the audio sounds like in range and, and as it gets to the edge of range. Of course, yeah. Before we, we move, right now we're in the main menu and I'm going to change the operational preset, of course. I'll do device configuration and then we call device RF, mm -hmm. operational preset, and then through here you can kind of see the different modes that, uh, that are enabled. So right now we're in four channel wideband, uh, one to four channels. Four channels go up to frequency one to one mm -hmm. antenna. Very simple. Mm -hmm. But we could do, oh my God. yeah, narrow band combined, right? There's the four frequencies out, out of a single antenna and letting you know what output power you're getting. Mm -hmm. uh, narrow band, uh, just every output gets a frequency, which is pretty simple. And then you have narrow band spatial <laughs> diversity combined for, you know, two uh -huh. antennas for two frequencies. Uh -huh. Narrow band spatial diversity. Uh, analog FM combined, so all four analogs out of a single output. Um, and what's the RF output from each carrier at that so point? So it'll be 20 milliwatts all in uh, as, as the output uh, oh. for each one combined is, is, is based on FCC regulations, right? Mm -hmm. And then the analog FM, of course, if you did discrete outputs, you know, uh, you would get uh, 40 milliwatts. Got it. You know, and at the each at each uh, out of each out yeah. of each output, of course. Yeah. So, it really it visually lays it down for you here, which is nice, and it also gives you like a where to which ones to plug the antennas in, what the output power is, and totally you could just scroll through it to your heart's content and really get a, a great explanation of all the different ways you could plug it in. Um, but right now, I think we're going to go narrow band uh, straight up, and there we're going to do. Uh, one frequency with a stereo audio out of antenna A is mm -hmm. what we're after at high at 40 milliwatts and see uh, what happens. Great. Before we go, we'll scan to make sure it's on a clean frequency. Um, so what are we doing here? We're, we're doing a spectrum scan from the, the unit itself. Of course, after it's done, we'll visually see it on this little display. And mm -hmm. you can move around and see what's free and all of that. Mm -hmm. You can zoom in if you want to get more of a granular uh, level. But let's take a look here. Set zoom one, we can go to two or three or four and really get deep in there and mm -hmm. see what's going on. 
but we can walk around the front panel and get this information captured uh, and work with it uh, on the rack unit itself. So right, let's, let's take do a look. that. Yeah. Yeah. So we're syncing over IR. Yep, we're taking the scan data, and now we have it. Mm -hmm. um, we can do cool stuff now, like view the scan, and oh. we can see exactly what the pack picked up, um, and all of that. We can go back out, and we can use uh, this information now to do a uh, group scan or channel scan. You know, just like most Axiom Digital, if you do a group scan, uh, it'll find the best group. Uh, it tells you right here, mm -hmm. using the currently saved RF scan, if you need a new scan, it tells you how to do that, um, which we, we've already done. So we're going to find the best group, number one. Uh, it'll go through, and then it tells you the different options. You have full range, max channels, okay, deploy. And as simple as that, we deployed it to the transmitter unit, and because the uh, receiver is over show link, it should sync up automatically you know mm -hmm. 568 825 was the one that it picked mm -hmm. and we see that exactly is what is on the front panel as well so amazing of course I would do it for all of your channels or all your frequencies uh, if you have more than just a one the all right let's go yeah okay so hitting record um, and the signal flow is we have the uh, pack um, set to the frequency I'm gonna stick it in my pocket and um, now I'm going to put it into the zoom. So that's going to be our marker. There we go. We have audio. And um, yeah, I mean, I guess we should show our incredibly makeshift system. So we have a single antenna. Uh, and we yeah, have transmitter down there, single antenna. Um, away we go. All right. right. Thank you. Here we go. Now, as you can see, I'm walking directly away from the antenna. So this is really, um, truly going to be the absolute um, worst case scenario walking away. Sorry. And here we go. And I am into the uh, stairwell. So now we have like a whole building. I'm starting to hear a little drop. Up. We'll make this file available. Walk down the stairs. Yep, so stairwell is always a dead zone for us. And we're going to go around the building. Oh, it's a nice day. So definitely hearing some dropouts here, but that's to be expected. Uh, but as we come around the corner, I'll show you where the antenna is to where we've been. Welcome to New York. Right. And so, just to give you a sense, that open window is where the antenna is. So here we go on our range test. And the song is looping. There we go. Okay, here we go. Still have good range. There we go. Still have good range. And we'll make this file available, like I said. Alright. Such a nice day out. These fall days. Here we go. Still hearing good audio. But I, I'm just holding the zoom. The actual units in my pocket down there. Okay. Still have good range. I'm starting to hear. Maybe just a dropout or two, but they're brief. All right. And I think this is still very usable. OK. 
okay, this is sort of the edge of the range. I think, yeah, it's like one dropout too many. So I'm gonna call it. Ben, thank you so much for bringing this to us. This is really, uh, it is groundbreaking technology. There's so many groundbreaking ideas. I can't stop using that word with this. Um, I'm very, very excited uh, to get it into our customers' hands. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions about this, I'm sure there's stuff I missed. Um, put it in the chat. Ben and I will go through the chat. We'll answer your questions. Um, thank you so much for watching. Fun fact about the history of this recording. Um, this was a group of employees that uh, got together and wrote this as our whole music wrote and performed.